So good morning, those of you who are in chat. Hello, those of you who are watching on YouTube. This will be the first episode of on deck. not only here. my good friend Permanoob showing up in chat, but the first day of <clears throat> what I intend to be a slower paced walk through the NG Plus of Horizon Forbidden West. And it will be done from the concept of explaining what is a very rich world and a very complex story. So it comes in with the hope that you have seen or have played Horizon Zero Dawn. If you have not, I would recommend that you explore the lore videos of Random Side Quest and Patient Wolf, and then also maybe watch the 40 episode walkthrough that Patient Plays did of Horizon Zero Dawn. But in a nutshell, Aloy is a was born an outcast, raised by a man named Rost, and didn't understand why she was an outcast of the Nora tribe in this post-apocalyptic world. And the journey she goes on has her discover that the world that we know collapsed due to hubris of effectively one man who created a series of peacekeeping military robots who could fuel themselves via biomass consumption and then these robots went rogue. The world was not saved but life was preserved by a scientist named Elizabeth Sobek who Aloy is a genetic clone of. And the project which was used to allow life to continue was a gigantic AI-driven terraforming and human incubation machine called Zero Dawn. And at the end of the story, Aloy had to defeat one of Gaia, the terraforming AI's subfunctions called Hades. Hades had been unshackled from Gaia due to an unknown signal from somewhere. And we left that game not knowing why Hades had been let loose. And Hades' function was to reset the terraforming system in the event that Gaia had gotten the regenesis of life wrong. So Aloy was trying to defeat Gaia with the assistance of many friends she met along the way, and then one man named Silence who was more driven by his own ambition to learn and acquire knowledge. But in the end, Hades was defeated, but then recaptured by this man named Silence. And here we have Aloy victorious at what is called the Battle of Meridian, hailed as a savior by all of the tribes around her, but she understands that the terraforming system is still failing because in order to protect the system from Hades, Gaia had to self-destruct herself. So there is no Gaia running the terraforming system, and it's slowly beginning to break down. And that is the 90-second to two-minute synopsis of Horizon Zero Dawn, and that's where we pick up with Aloy and maybe a companion she didn't want to have come along with her. As we start the, what I have is a pre-ready made next game plus or new game plus save that will allow us to step into Forbidden West story, which is the land to the west of where Horizon Zero Dawn took place so that we can go through this next phase of the journey with her. And I don't know if this will be done in time for the DLC, which will come out in, I believe, April. Uh, we'll see. Uh, because my intention is to walk slow. I am playing NG Plus because I want to not be shackled by the need to grind gear or go get resources. My satchels are all upgraded. I have all of my legendary weapons that I wish to use max upgraded. I have my armor max upgraded. And I have the materials necessary to max upgrade the two weapons that are NG Plus only that I wish to acquire. So I will not be spending time going through and grinding. I will be walking, I will be exploring and reading the lore or allowing the audio to play that we find and then kind of elaborating on the synopsis I just gave so that we can further learn how this all fits into the grander piece of the Horizon lore. So here we go.
time, Elizabeth. The land is dying. People are suffering. Soon, they'll starve. All because of a terraforming system that's spiraling out of control. And only I can fix it. Only I have your genetic code. It won't be long before we hit the point of no return. And then... Extinction. I've been searching for months for what I need. A backup of Gaia. The AIU designed to control the system. I'm walking under a brilliant night sky, through a field of flowers. And when I arrive at the center, I see you, Elizabeth. Waiting for me, even though you've been dead for a thousand years. You're the closest person I've ever had to a mother. For a moment, I feel whole. But it never lasts. left alone. This world is your legacy, Elizabeth. I won't let it slip away. The valley below is my only remaining lead. My last hope to find the backup. I'll do whatever it takes to get it. I promise. Varl? <laughs> if it isn't Aloy, the savior of Meridian, anointed of the Nora. You know I hate being called that stuff. Well... Consider it a punishment for running out on us the very same night we beat Hades. I grew up an outcast. Remember, I'm not much for parties. Yeah. But that one was in your honor. Just saying. So! What are we doing? Must be urgent since you left so fast. Delving into ancient ruins? Or maybe it has something to do with the Blight. Both, actually, but, um... I should... Oh, no. I've been tracking you a long way. It's okay. After everything you've done to help the Nora and my family, I swore an oath to help you, no matter what. You're stuck with me now. Like bark on wood. Okay, but if you're going to come with me, you'll need to be able to see what I see. <sighs> A focus? Never thought I'd get your second sight. I'll give you another one later and show you how to back up your data. Data? Information on the device. We've got a lot to cover. 
Um, I'll have to explain everything as we go. You see like this all the time? Since I was a little girl. Come on. Shall we? Grapes on the way here. We should find some medicinal plants. Stock up. So it's time for your first lesson with the focus. Sounds good. Let's get started. So a couple of notes to start things off. One you'll plants don't look like the ones in the sacred lands. Good morning, Dustin. Notice my health is down, but I'm not starting with base game health. Most plants by the stream should do the trick. Also notice that I'm not wearing the armor nor have the weapons I wish to have. Part of NG Plus is that you you start off with the original. This is the tutorial, and I'm replaying it for the purposes of there being a lore. But a couple things to talk about for those unfamiliar with Horizon. First is what is a focus? And if you look at Aloy on the side of her head, she has a triangular device, which is made by a company called Faro Automated Solutions, the same Faro company who made the robots that brought about, about the apocalypse. It allows Aloy to effectively read data. You have to think of it as an augmented reality device that um, is akin to the evolution of, like, augmented glasses. Um, it allows her to readily access and store data. And she just gave one to Varl, and it has been deemed her second sight by this more primitive humanity. Um, the Nora tribe, which both of these individuals, Varl and Aloy, belonged to, or belonged to, uh, see the old world as forbidden. So the idea that Varl, A, has a focus and B has been allowed to leave the sacred lands to accompany Aloy is something of a big deal. But who is Varl? First encounter Varl in Zero Dawn as Aloy, a newly anointed seeker, attempts to or goes to leave the Nora Embrace and Sacred Lands, which is where they're only allowed to be, to find out what had happened at her proving, which saw Varl's sister, among other people, slaughtered. She assists Varl, and then Varl kind of disappears, and then comes back at the Grand Battle, where all the tribes come together. And now, Varl has tracked Aloy down, because his mother, Sona, who was a war chief of the Nora, charged him a very long time ago to be Aloy's shield. And so, he feels it is his duty, due to everything Aloy has done, to be there for her. <clears throat> Aloy, on the other hand, as you'll see as we progress through the game, it's pulling back, pulling back even more. She was an isolated person when she grew up. She doesn't see the tribe as something that she needs, even though her mentor Rost told her that the tribe would need her. So she's pulling back from people, and she's really diving into this notion that the only person who would understand her is Elizabeth, who has been dead for thousands of years. So these two are looking for a copy of Gaia, which is the master AI application which has been lost, and was running the terraforming, pro uh, the terraforming program called Zero Dawn. So we're going to get some medicine so that we can heal ourselves. And the, the way that the focus integrates with the gameplay is, it is actually in an AR sense, an augmented reality sense, highlighting these plants to Aloy so that she can see what's what without having to walk up to everything. So we can heal ourselves now and use up a lot of our berries. At least they make you feel better. And I need to very quickly inspect what weapons I have so that I know how I can fight. I just have a hunter bow with no arrows. Yay. So the tutorial is going to teach us how to gather resources like the medicine we need and very shortly the ridgewood we need. Dustin, thanks for the resub, by the way. And if you're not following my friend Dustin or Permanoob or Rocket, the links popped up. Go give them a follow. So 
So this red plant here is what Varl referred to as the blight. It is effectively the biosphere which Gaia was the caretaker and creator of post zero biology, zero life on Earth, thanks to the Pharaoh machine plague. As the biosphere breaks down, this red plant is poisoning the land. It's actually harmful to Aloy. I traveled a long way to get here. I almost caught up to you a couple times too. But it's not easy keeping up with a machine rider. You always were a good tracker. <coughs> oh, some of the blight is... It's peeling off. Dead skin. Is that how it spreads? Ugh. Those ruins. That's where we need to go. So that zip line is where we want to be. A few ways down. But we don't have we have five whole rocks. So I will get my stash back once we finish the tutorial. I haven't lost any of that. It's an AI. It's um Tab Zero before the apex of a jump to towards water to perform a swan like dive. A set of instructions that can fix the world. Sure. We certainly took the zip line the first time we played. That is not a swan dive. That was a belly flop. Stop looking at me, Swan. Find anything good down there? Also, you'll notice that for those of you that played Horizon Zero Dawn, the armor that Aloy starts in is the Shield Weaver, Look, except it doesn't work. And it's never been really explained why. I think it's more wear and tear and power cells. That's kind of the headcanon I have for myself right now, is this doesn't work because... It simply can't be on all the time. There is a what is called a Valor Surge, which will allow you to use it for a moment. And that's actually the Valor Surge I have equipped on my save. But I do miss it. Salvaging machine carcasses as usual. And there they go. Looks like they left a carcass behind. So those are machines that Gaia, through her sub-function named Hephaestus, designed and built, or had Hephaestus build, in order to keep the biosphere going. Build and keep the biosphere going, among other things. But now that Gaia is gone, Hephaestus is free about 20 years ago, because Gaia has been gone that long, pretty much as long as Aloy has been alive. Hephaestus started to see humanity as a threat to his machines because he didn't have the governing concept of Gaia to say no that's what we're here to protect and so Hephaestus started to create more violent machines and started to reprogram his existing machines to not be timid but to attack on sight and so that is why what is known as the derangement occurred Take a closer look. where the machines became hostile and Hephaestus began to create hunter killers like the Ravager and the uh, the acid bellowback and more offensive oriented machines someone took down his machine recently who else would come lots of people Varl we better craft some arrows of our own there might be trouble ahead. The idea that Aloy walked up some Ridgewood. in here with no arrows blows my mind. Like, I get that, yes, they want to teach you to craft, but they should have had at least five in the quiver or something. A but can't reach it from here. Nothing a well placed arrow can't knock free. And given to target the lock. that I don't have my stash or my pouches, I'm going to be. A little more judicious about picking up resources of all. If you'll please step out of the way, thank you very much. So this is how some of the ladders in Zero Dawn work. Others do not have that nice, easy to locate drop mechanism. So you will notice that as I do this, what I'm calling a lore through, and I am borrowing that term from Patient Wolf. And this concept of walking through the game was inspired by both him and my friend Saber in Space, who did something kind of like this for uh, Breath of the Wild. 
is I'm going to take my time. I'm going to allow the, the scene to unfold, and I'm going to make sure that I scan areas, which means that this is going to take a while. By the goddess. What was this place? I don't know. The transmission, the uh, message I found. Didn't we will explain anything. what this place I'm is as we start to here. scratch the surface of what exactly is here. So, um, what happened after I left Meridian? Well, there was a fuss when people realized you were gone. But then some of us figured you only would have left if it were for something important. Remember to clonk that follow button. Yeah, that is the plan, Perm. I'm going to post these to YouTube. Fish, good morning. The plan is that I don't think it's reasonable for me to expect people to hang out for what will be hours and hours and hours of Forbidden West Horizon War. But if people want to keep up, <clears throat> I do intend to post them to YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're standing outside of some sort of <clears throat> structure of the old world. And let's not walk into that blight Aloy. That this stone and cement structure has somehow lasted through thousands of years, but it is overgrown. And apparently a signal of some kind, which is very nondescript, has come to Aloy's attention as she continues her search for what she hopes to be a backup copy of Gaia. I'm already at 90 Ridgewood, thank you. How are you doing this morning, Fish? Rex, thank you for the resub. Very much appreciated. Like I said, we're going to be a little judicious about picking up resources early because I don't have the benefit of leaning into the massive hoarder pile of items which I, which I acquired as my a part of my base game run through. It's resub day for some people. Get to the cross. Is that a burrower? Yeah. Well, yep. mm. So Varl just commented that he's never seen this machine before because there are new machines in the West. So Aloy is saying, scan it to figure out what it is, which we're okay. doing. See how parts of it it's weak to fire and Those are its weak spots. impact. We don't have fire. We do have knockdown shot. So if this thing become a problem, we can knock it down. We do have our abilities. But that right there is what I want to hit. Stop moving around. Look for us. Wow, that's a lot more shots than I'm used to taking at a burrower. But he's dead. Another one's coming. Sound is so bad. I hate when the sound attack hits. Die, thank you. Don't you just run up and smash it with your pointy stick? If this was Permanoob's channel, that's probably how we would handle that. On the machine, like a hunter studying its prey. Yeah, kind of. So after the fuss over me leaving, what did everyone else do? Well, as soon as the celebration was over, my mother led the rest of the Nora home. The Sun King put his people to work rebuilding the city. And I set out to find you. That would be Sun King Avad, 14th of the Radiant Line, King of Meridian. And again, Varl's mother is named Sona. Someone shot this machine, too. I mean, you can if you want, Rex. The idea here is to help 
further explain as things are happening in the game what they mean but also if anyone has questions i mean from memory i'll do my best to answer whatever questions you know one may have about what is this thing in horizon you know because this is one of those worlds i think in the absence of a good mass effect Another game I need to shoot off the lock uh, I think in the absence of a good Mass Effect game or the continuation of that series in a meaningful way, Horizon has kind of become that happy place game that I go to to play and kind of escape single player, just not think, um, because I really enjoy its story and I really enjoy the, the lore. Got it. Yeah, there was, a, there was a good Mass Effect game. There were, there were probably, I would say, two of them. In retrospect, I don't think the first Mass Effect was all that great. It was great for its day. But Mass Effect 2 and 3 were fantastic. Andromeda, I enjoyed, despite all the instantaneous... Yeah, found my first yeah it's actually, this is important. Andromeda was good. The others from for me. Not long ago. But Aloy, because she was an outcast, fell into and delved into an old war ruin when she was six years old and found a focus, and it shaped her life. She became much more informed and intelligent than those around her because she use the focus to understand the world that she was in. No, that's not a bad opinion. It's just a matter of everyone's entitled to their opinion. I give Perm a lot of grief for his opinion of Mass Effect, but I mean, it's your opinion. You love many games that I go, huh? Why does everyone think this one's good? But I don't, I don't know. I kind of joke and shame you guys in the moment, but I don't care. Play what you want to play. God has protect us. We'll be okay. So Varl's expressing the trepidation of Enora because the Nora religion sees here. the old world as taboo, that it's dangerous and bad, and, and the, the worshipping of metal is what calls the downfall of the old ones. Far Zenith? Far Zenith. Why would they have a backup of Gaia? Who is Far Zenith? I guess they want us to check in with them. So during the clawback, which was a period in the mid 21st century after Ted Farrow and Elizabeth Sobeck had helped introduce green robotics to help the world recover from a massive climate crisis, uh, the major governments of the world started a program called the Odyssey, which was an, an orbital. Uh, space traveling vehicle which was intended to take humanity beyond our solar system to the Sirius star system. Uh, from the, the idea was humanity needed to, and it's something I actually believe in, humanity needed to have be multi-planner. It had to live on more than one world. But as corporate warfare of the 2050s wore on, the governments of the world backed off the project and became derelict. A comp a a conglomerate called Far Zenith, which was comprised of the 77 most wealthy and influential individuals in the world, bought the Odyssey program from all of these nations and decided to continue the concept. And then they did work with the Zero Dawn project as it was going on and they share of information. One of the reasons that the Eleuthia 9 Cradle, which is where Aloy was born, the reason Zero Dawn had this incubation technology was because of Far Zenith. So there was an information exchange that existed between the two organizations because they were both at the time seen as the hope to continue the perpetuation of humanity and its history and its culture. So that's who Far Zenith is. As far as you need to know plot wise right now. Hold for identity scan. Access denied. Please wait here for personnel to assist you, Doctor Sobeck. Okay. I guess they weren't on great terms with Elizabeth. Well, let's find a way in. So you'll note the system just recognized her as Elizabeth Sobeck because they have the same genetic Please identity. Hold for identity scan. Access denied. Varl tried it. I didn't notice that in my first playthrough. It doesn't like me either. So there is information to the story as we go in here. Hey, that's Varl. Yeah, we know that. Anything else here that is scannable? No. Just that door.
But if we're not careful, and we rush through this, you can miss some very interesting pieces on top of, you know, boxes of stuff. I don't know why I'm crouching. Should be able to pry this open. So one of the cool features of playing Forbidden West on, and well, not Horizon Zero Dawn because it doesn't have the feature, but um, is haptic feedback. When I press this trigger to open this door, I actually have to press it. It it has feedback that makes it harder to press. It's interesting, and I don't. The one thing PlayStation Five really has going for it that I'm like, that's awesome. There's climbing gear. Guess someone dropped in from above. Whoever left us here might have also shot those machines we found earlier. So where are they now? So we'll continue to pick up resources. Also, the outline of a training dummy that was picked up by us. So what we're about to run into, and those of you that are familiar with Zero Dawn will recognize that this ruin has been visited by Delvers of the Osaram tribe, or the Osaram tribe. Ugh. One of the That's three French. core tribes in the base game. Uh, the Nora being one, and the Karja being one, and then the Banuk being added later on. But who the Osaram are is they believe that the world is a great machine. And they are the the doubt. delvers and, and delve scrap. technological creators that, of the world. That explains the smell. And you can see that they the have ringed metal, right through the camp. much more leather-based armor, culturally. Take a look at the rubble in that gap. But they're dead here, and they have been hit by something which spits acid. But the Osram are the, in terms of the tribes that are known in the Horizon world, they are the engineers. They would be kind of the antithesis of the Nora in that they're brawlers and drinkers. They're kind of like, if you could think in fantasy terms, almost like the dwarves of of Horizon, where, um, I, and I, I truly believe that it was their inspiration. There needed to be a dwarf type, you know, tribe in the Osram fill that. That doesn't mean they're ignoble or anything like that. They're good people for the most part, but they just have a very different way in which their culture evolved. They're hell-bent for leather, yes. There's a workbench there, which we're about to use once we find the part we're looking for. That is a training dummy. But if you play the Horizon games, these dummies exist. And they actually are useful if you're trying to min-max builds. Because you can see what damage you're doing to it, and then the thing respawns. So if you're trying to get a good gauge for what little tweaks you make to your gear are doing, or your build, those are very good ways to do that. But this path is blocked, and Aloy does not currently have a mechanism to get through it. But she, if anything, is curious and has a high degree of ingenuity. Whatever came through here brought this down as it went out. If I can dislodge some of the debris, we might be able to squeeze through. Maybe I can find something to help in the camp. Aloy, over here. I think I got something. Varl is a very good guy. Up, up, thank you. It's some kind of Osram prototype, I think. This hook looks like it can latch onto things. And this gear pulls it back. Hmm. It looks broken, but maybe we can repair it. Hook it to the debris. And pull it out. That could work. The focus can help us search the camp and identify anything we can use to fix the tool. <laughs> My focus picked up a couple of things to check out. It's very nice that the focus auto highlighted things for us here and they stay highlighted. So there are there's a rucksack there. And there is that's far all. But these items which are being highlighted are basically quest points of interest. 
Lot of supplies here. I guess they plan to stay a while. Machine cable. Stronger than rope. So we obtained a cable, and what we're, what we're building is called a pole caster, is what Aloy will call it. And it will become one of the critical tools of the game. And as you progress through Zero or Forbidden West and Zero Dawn, um, it's almost Metroidvania gated in a way to where you have to progress and acquire these tools and then go back to areas that you couldn't previously access with the necessary tool. The nice thing about NG Plus is I won't be restricted that way. Which allows us to delve into whatever we're curious about. Could help fix the gears. All right, I think I have what I need to repair the tool. Or maybe even make something better. You could use this workbench. So we are going to go in and make the pool caster. You'll notice I have the other tools already built. But it wants me to craft it again, even though it's already crafted in my save. There we go. And the way NG Plus works is, as you can see now, it's grayed out and checkmarked again. So the gray checkmark means I did this in my prior save. You still have this, but if you want to complete the run, you'd still need to reaccomplish these things in NG Plus. So now we have the pole caster. There. Uh, pole caster. Now to test it on the debris. So we'll aim, and you'll see these blue X's will become a thing. As will, I believe, this one here. I do like the fact that you can't just stand right next to it. That the game actually wants you to respect physics to a degree and stand far enough back to make the pull possible. Well, it doesn't look like there's an easy way out of here. I should scan the area. We have to find a way to keep going. Huh. What's this thing for? Well, that is something What's this? that will give us information. Whoa. Good morning. I'm Oswald Dalgard, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Far Zenith. Forget what you think you know about us. Our truth is simple. We say reach for the stars, even if you have to cross 8.6 light years of space to get there. Please proceed into the auditorium, where we'll unveil our plans. So Oswald Dalgard is the only public face in this of Far Zenith. And that figure he just gave, 8.6 light years, is worthy of note because it will become important plot wise down the road. Focus display and see what I can find. We see Varl. Huh. There's a grapple point. I might be able to get up there. Wow. That works. Now that we have a pool caster. That pool caster is useful. Too bad there's only one. Don't worry, I'll find you another way up. So now we've got Varl, who was the guy who helped us think of a way to get past the first obstacle, who we now have to find a way up for. One of the major changes between Zero Dawn and Forbidden West is the climbing system. The Zero Dawn climbing system was very much more on rails. And you'll see here there's a series of red X's on the wall when I scan with the focus that mean the area cannot be climbed. But you'll see that yellow line there. That is a climbable or mantleable point. And as you get into the open world, those yellow spots become far more prevalent. They're not as explicit as, hey, look, there's a yellow bar here. Hey, we missed. Because we are dumb. We didn't run.
Now, the climbing system in her both Horizon games can be frustrating if you're impatient. If you don't take the time to be deliberate about your button presses. There we got that time. So we have to figure out a way for Varl to get up here. Hopefully there's a ladder we can just knock down. I don't remember this portion of the intro. Okay, I gotta drop the ladder. <laughs> Look at it, you Dustin. I'm not looking at anybody. What ladder for Varl? Let's scan and see if we see a ladder for Varl, because I don't see one. I also don't see a pull caster point. And we're definitely not making that jump, so where is the ladder for Varl? Just jumped over here. There is no ladder there. Oh, there's a ladder down there. Okay, cool. If only there was a marker on the screen that said this is where you're supposed to go. There you go, Varl. Thanks. It was convenient that that rope ladder was uh was placed there for us. I'm not listening. Yeah, I know. push the boundary as explorers, pioneers, trailblazers. And now Far Zenith is taking the next leap into the future. That's why we're proud to have resurrected the Odyssey. When our government's abandoned in orbit, Far Zenith will actualize in less than a decade. But that's only the beginning. When the ship is complete, we will send the Odyssey and her crew where no one's gone before. The serious system. There will create humanity's first off world colony. The Odyssey may take 300 years to reach it. That figure is also important. Look up at the night sky. We'll know they're on their way. And in the words of our founder, the late Peter Shinbumbe, the truest form of immortality is data corrupt. The playback stopped. The old ones could fly through the sky? Between the stars? Uh, well, yes, sort of. That ship, the Odyssey, it, it never made it to the other star. Something went wrong, and it blew up. Imagine Varl, who's had a focus for 10 minutes seeing that. Is that why Elizabeth gave them a backup of Gaia? For their colony? Error. Public presentation file corrupted. Member recruitment file available. Do you wish to reactivate? Yeah, reactivate. Let's see what else they had to say. We all know the projections. Economic instability, new biocontagions, rampant AIs. How long before another catastrophe creates unacceptable risk for the world's elite? We here at Far Zenith believe, escape the inevitable. And so we reach for the stars. Now you've seen what we're building here. Infrastructure to support the Odyssey's construction. A state-of-the-art data center to facilitate rapid technological advancements. And you've seen how we're managing public perception. So invest and join us. Claim your birth on the Odyssey. Preserve your way of life beyond the concerns of Earth. Well, they were right about the world ending. I just didn't know how. Yet. So everything they said back there about the next step for humanity, it was all a lie. These people only cared about saving their own skin. Yeah, well, didn't work out for them in the end. The irony 
That Oswald guy mentioned a data center. The irony is that when the world's governments originally founded the Odyssey program, it was seen as a escape vehicle for the elite, which it wasn't. There. And then when it was resurrected by Far Zenith, that's exactly what it was. Won't be able to swim across. I guess we'll have to find a way around. Come on. So you'll notice that that was the recruitment video. You know, it did. It couldn't load one video, so the system loaded the recruitment video where Oswald Dal Dalgard was saying, "Oh, well, now we're talking to you, the wink, wink, you know, cream of society, and you're the ones worth saving." But Far Zenith wasn't even that altruistic or transparent. Oswald Dalgard himself does not make it onto. The Odyssey, as do many, many other investors and workers on the project. They just don't get on the ship because it doesn't have as much room as they're advertising. Let's have a look around, make sure we're not missing anything here as I talk. So to open the wilds have really grown over this place. To open Forbidden West with this complex answered one of the core questions. The Odyssey was mentioned and Far Zenith was mentioned in Zero Dawn, but you really had to pay attention to the audio files and the, the written lore snippets to understand you know, this thing actually exists. And it was relatively inconsequential to the Horizon Zero Dawn storyline. It was there, but, you know, kind of was also like, well, who cares? You know, it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of let's find the Remember Master Override and, and destroy Hades. But they opened the tutorial with this. And I would say that if you're, you know, Playing Forbidden West, don't skip the tutorial. This is important. It's very important to the plot of this game. So again, here we have another pull caster spot. I do not have all the data points memorized, so we'll, I've gotten most of them in my base playthrough. So we'll kind of find them and read them and understand them together. I did hear the sound of a machine behind me, though. Oh, look at that! What is that? I know what that is. Keep your guard up. Oh, my guard is up. That's a nope rope. <laughs> That's what it should be called. Until you get very good at, ta at taking those guys on. Hey, whoop, a rock. So that when it, when his head comes around the corner as it and is in, and is in view, we can hit it with the rock. Up here. More burrowers. So I believe this is a stealth tutorial. Careful. Don't want those things to call in some friends from underground. You take the left one. I'll deal with the one on the right. Okay. It's not very sportsmanlike. <laughs> um, there are ways to deal with the nope rope. The um, first one is get it knocked down. And if you have drill over time, spike thrower, um, that will that will get it down, also freezing it and adding brittle damage to it and then hitting it anywhere along its tail, which is on the ground, is also very useful. Unless you're trying to harvest specific parts. Okay, so what Aloy is talking about here is, one, we can tag targets, and two, we can mark patrol paths. Uh, patrol paths are very good for pe for hunters, people who play the hunter style who want to put who want to use rope casters. Now, Varl is going to take this guy out. So what we need to do is we need to get in position, and we're going to basically kill these guys via stealth at the same time, which is a very viable way to approach a lot of the small to mid machines in Horizon. So we're going to wait for him to go around that corner. Move up. I can throw a rock to distract it. Get it into a position where I can sneak up and strike. Just we also don't want that one up there to see us, though. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the rock out. We're gonna send him into that corner over there. We're right there. We're telling us to. Go have a look, buddy. Varl should be taking his out right there. Yep. Gotcha. Mine's down too. And he comes back down. Okay. So we'll continue to pick up materials just in case we need them. This first fight with the nope rope is going to be interesting, though, because I'm very used to fighting it my way, not the you don't have any your way. Uh, another approach for the nope rope, and I'm, I'm using that term to not kind of spoil what it is for people, um, is to tie it down. Um, I would say you probably need a pur the purple uh, rope caster for that. It's not like we need the parts, but parts are sellable. And as, I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about Zero Dawn is nothing is useless. Nothing you and I can't handle. Alright, so how many of them are there here? There is that one there. And if there's that one there. So if we F this up, these boys will call buddies. Um, I will show you how to use the rope caster. Uh, as we get into the main game, because I will deploy it to say this is the right way to use the rope caster. Need one of these two boys to turn around. Yeah, so when he makes that turn there, okay, I see what I'm going to do now. Fighting them all wouldn't be a big deal. Thanks, for all. We're going to wait, though. This isn't this isn't Dustin stream. We're just gonna run in there and mess up the stealth part. I'm probably gonna mess it up now that I said that, but The rope caster's best usage, though, in my opinion, is a plasma rope caster for flying machines. Where, if you can get them down and then tie them down with plasma, most flying machines do not like plasma, and it's a great damage over time. The uh, Stormberg expressly, that's a great tactic to take it on. It all comes down to the basic question of, do you want parts from this thing? Because if you don't want parts from this thing, spike thrower. Spike thrower all day long. There's another one down there. That's gonna draw his buddy in though. I wasn't expecting that. His pal's gonna get curious about that though. They up there, there he is. See, that prompt disappeared on me just as I pressed it. But we got them all without that sounding the alarm. That's what we wanted. I've been meaning to mention. I noticed you have a new look. These Don't days. beard shame Varl, Aloy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Didn't have a lot of time to shave when I was trying to catch up to you. Don't worry, it's not permanent. Good. What do you mean good? Sorry, my whiskers offend you. It looks great with a beard. I love Varl's beard. What I was saying though is I think I like the idea in, in the Horizon games that all of the materials, everything you find has use, even if it's only to be sold. There's no useless item. There's very few just sell me junk pieces. A lot of it is components of 
weapons and traps and upgrades and it's just in the way that machines are layered it suggests that there are a lot of a lot of thought went into the way they're designed looks like this little guy got caught up in the blight couldn't escape or a little fox I hope it didn't suffer long the important question is, is it skin and bone salvageable for satchel upgrades? Not that I need them, but... Burrower and a burrower, okay. Anything over here we need to be concerned with? No, we can just deal with these guys. Other we dead burrowers. Used explosives against the machines. They managed to get a couple. So this is kind of where the Osram were holding the out. Must have broken through. <clears throat> After they realized they had gotten in over their heads here. Good morning, Sai. this for later. Guess that Osram didn't have a chance to use it. Careful. Traps. Those ahead. are blast traps. Huh. Might be able to disarm them. And that is awfully close. There we go. There. Managed to salvage some supplies. And not blow yourself up. Dismantled it. And got more supplies. Looks like another camp. While we're here, maybe we can make some traps of our own. Might come in handy against machines. Good idea. So again, tutorial. Wanted to teach you how to make traps. Though I don't want a lot of rudimentary blast traps in my inventory. I will take them for now. We're also going to grab everything they'll give us here. There's blast traps, and I will craft a couple. One, there. two. There we go. Explosive trap made. We're just getting started. We're still Anything in the tutorial. One of those. <clears throat> won't know what hit it. Kind of just ex setting the groundwork and explaining what's going on. So we're at the the far zenith Over facility. Hey, Lloyd. I think I see a way up. I already see it. And explaining who they are and who Varl is and what the Nora are and that is a sawtooth or a yeah it's gotta be a sawtooth scrounger okay scrounger that's new to me let's see where its weak points are maybe we could place one of those traps you made in its path good morning my friend Mr Landiggity how are you doing so I'm not really down for the whole put traps in this path thing. Um, I am down for the whole let's try to take off its component parts and wreck it as quickly as we can thing. Which we missed! Good job, Warl. I'm gonna have to kill the other one. You've been in a lot of old world ruins. I'm doing okay, Diggity. I've been fighting some sort of stomach bug for about a week and a half. But otherwise, I'm doing well, my friend. 
back to work. Got my feet firmly planted very quickly, as I would expect myself to do, because I read my email while I was on vacation. I don't know. Doing okay. Just kind of starting the thing that I had talked about doing, which was a slow walk through Horizon Forbidden West and really explaining what's going on. Not concerned about the challenge of difficulty or anything like that. I'm more concerned with... I only was exposed to some of these things once, and I really want to understand the story better, and then help anybody else who really likes this world to delve into what's behind it. The, the lore of this game is one of the things that makes it very, very enticing to play, or for me, I, there are days where I just fired up and hunt in it. So, just like, I mean, a lot of people have passions that in gaming that they enjoy. Horizon is one of those for me, so... And I know a lot of people are, are very mainline story focused when they get a, a new AAA game like this and they kind of, I wouldn't say skip, but don't recall what they saw. And that's one of the things I'm looking to remedy by both doing this live and also having these play, pay, uh, put on YouTube so people can come back and watch and see a particular chapter or whatever. The nope rope, as Hermanoob called it, is moving. Uh, so this will be a jump over here. Hopefully you had a good holiday, Diggity. I haven't talked to you in a, in a while. I don't think just that's the nature of the holidays. Right, there was a rope ladder that I saw, but I believe we're not there yet. In we go. Definitely some lore snippets in here. That's a big storm picking up out there. Yeah. And they're getting stronger. And more frequent. Eh, addiction of Valheim. The storms, the blighted lands, the rivers and lakes choked with algae. You were born to fix all that? Yeah. But I can only do it if I find that backup. Mm. Alright, that one will be Stan important. mentions the tech that Farzina have traded with Zero Dawn. Doesn't explain how they got it. Yeah, so like we were talking about, there was a technological exchange between Zero Dawn and Far Zenith, which was very instrumental to Zero Dawn succeeding. We're about to read a data point that explains that trade agreement a little bit better. Uh oh, did it go to the vault? Nope. You'll notice that I have changed the vault indicator. It is a red light now. It will shift back to green light when it's ready again. Poor diggity. Yeah, it says Rocket, who pulled 800,000 tributes from it last week. Alright, so what is going on here? As we continue to dig into the Farzina facility, what is on this? We are going to read these. This is one of the core things that we're going to do as a part of this playthrough, is actually get into what is the detail of the world. So this is Zero Dawn Trade Agreement. Text log. Data corruption partial. High Council Executive Summary. Negotiations with representatives from Zero Dawn have concluded, and I am exceptionally pleased that we've arrived at a mutually profitable agreement. It shows that sugar usually goes down better than salt, in contrast to the less tactful recommendations of certain of our more reactionary members. In short, Far Zenith will provide to Zero Dawn a copy of the prototype Homer archive already sent. 500 ectogenic chambers to be retrieved from storage at our NEMA facility. Supplementary ectogenesis research reports. So let's stop there. A copy of Homer. Homer is the basis for Apollo, which is the Gaia subfunction, which is the sum total library of all human knowledge and culture. The ectogenic chambers are what Horizon Zero or what Zero Dawn uses to make the Eleuthia birthing facilities, the cradle facilities as they're called. So Far Zenith gives Zero Dawn the basis for Apollo and the basis for Eleuthia. In exchange, Far Zenith will receive a copy of the alpha build of the Apollo database in the week prior to Odyssey's launch. By our estimates of Zero Dawn's timeline, by then it should be a near-complete repository of human knowledge. 
It should be noted that Dr. Sobek was very reluctant to agree to this, but I drew a line in the sand making it clear that this was a non-negotiable term. As our faithful media representative, I will continue to run all public communications with Dr. Sobek's team while data corrupted. So what Far Zenith is getting in return is we're going to give you Homer and the stuff for the Eleuthia Cradles, and we know you're going to build Apollo, which is a much larger expansion of this database. And when it's near, when we're ready to leave, we basically want the work you have so far, which should be nearly done. That was the deal. I don't think there's anything on these computers. And I don't think there's anything else back there. No, so we're gonna go through the door. Like we've got to climb up. We do have to climb very high up. So there's a climb point here, and there's a climb area over there. And there's a ladder to drop down here. This is the ladder I saw earlier. So first, where does this one go? years old pretty much the same area that we would have climbed there I'm pretty sure that one would have broken looks like some kind of meeting room that door on the other side's locked there's another one of those glowing things by the table The Zero Dawn terraforming system, the brainchild of Dr. Elizabeth Sobek, empowered by nine subordinate functions, Gaia, the core of the system, is capable of advanced planetary engineering, an obvious advantage to our space colonization efforts. Operation Phase One, establish an asset within Project Zero Dawn, status complete. Phase two, the asset will secretly beamcast a complete copy of Gaia and her subordinate functions to this facility's data center. If all goes well, Zero Dawn staff will remain completely unaware of the transmission. Risks. Discovery of this operation could result in Zero Dawn withholding the already negotiated Apollo database. Special care must be taken not to alert Travis Tate, the expert hacker in charge of Hades Protocol. In addition, Extreme caution must be exercised in regards to Dr. Sobek herself. As one of the world's preeminent technologists, she may have instituted unforeseen security measures. A complete assessment is attached. This concludes the executive summary. I thought Elizabeth sent the backup here. Mm -hmm. But she didn't. Far Zenith stole Gaia. Aloy? Why does that woman look like you? Uh, um, it's okay, bro. We look alike because we're the exact same, genetically identical. But she was one of the old ones. How can you be her? Because I wasn't born, I was made by a machine. It's why I'm motherless, why I was cast out as an infant. I don't understand. What kind of machine can make a person? Remember when I said the backup is like a set of instructions? It's more than that. It's called Gaia. And for a long time, she cared for the world until she had to destroy herself. So she made me to bring her back. I'm the only one who can. And this place is my last hope. You once said the goddess spoke to you when you went into All Mother Mountain. Was that this Gaia? Yes, but she's not the goddess, Laurel. 
there isn't one. How can you be sure? It sounds like she anointed you with a sacred task. I've had a lot of time to figure this out. And you will too, with the focus. But for now, the report said they were going to store the stolen copy of Gaia in the data center. So that's where we have to go. Okay? So there's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with, there was this project Anzu initiated by Far Zenith, which was effectively organizational or corporate espionage. Aloy, over here. We'll be there in a minute, Varl. I found something you could use. Where they intended to infiltrate the Zero Dawn project and then steal a copy of Gaia. Help them, but it can't help us. You'll note that the project briefing mentioned a man named Travis Tate, who is the alpha in charge of Hades. Every one of the sub-functions... Varl, we'll be there in a second. You know what? We'll do it this way. Each one of the sub-functions had what was called an alpha responsible for its development and integration with Gaia, which was being built by Elizabeth. Travis Tate was a criminal hacker, and he was recruited by Elizabeth because he thought differently. He's still of that mindset, which is why they're saying, don't let Travis Tate find out what's going on, because his reaction will be really bad. And then, of course, don't let Elizabeth, who's one of the greatest minds of her century, find out, or we may not even know how she has safeguarded what's going on. But their plan was get somebody into Zero Dawn who would have access to and then enable them to beamcast, wirelessly transmit a copy of Gaia to Far Zenith, obviously with the intention of they want to take Gaia with them so that whenever they get to Sirius, they can terraform Sirius either much more easily or at all. And so that's the idea there. But then the second piece where Elizabeth looks like Aloy because they're genetic matches, and that takes Varl back. And he mentions All Mother Mountain, which is one, which is the Eleuthia 9 cradle facility where Aloy was gestated and born from genetic material that is from a part of Zero Dawn called the Lightbringer Protocol, where they had thought about it for a time to maybe, hey, let's make clones of ourselves, educate them so we could perpetually have an Elizabeth Sobek who is running Gaia for the next thousand years. And so as a part of that, they made copies of their DNA. And that is how Aloy was able to be born. Now, Lightkeeper was abandoned because it just wasn't feasible. They didn't want to do it. They didn't like the ethics of it, but the copy of the DNA was there. And that's how Gaia was able to make Aloy. Varl just had his religion challenged. He, Aloy just basically told him Santa Claus does not exist. And he, I mean, he was raised under this religion of the Nora. To have it put so bluntly to him, Aloy doesn't have patience or tact in this regard, which was one of the reasons she's a good character. She has faults, and this is one of her faults, where she is just like, look, Varl, I don't have time to explain it to you why your god doesn't exist, but trust me, Remember it doesn't to exist. Clonk that follow button. And that's... She could have gone about it in a different way and say, look... I understand this is very confusing. We're here to do something. I'd be more than happy to sit down and talk with you through your questions when we leave, but I need you right now. And she didn't take that line. And that is why she's a good character, because that is one of her flaws. She doesn't have patience in a lot of situations. And so she left Varl, kind of her one of her friends, to kind of stew in the notion that Aloy just said my goddess does not exist and that it's just a machine even though I can rationalize that into still being a part of my religion. But Varl wants us to look at something, so that's what we're going to go do. Aloy, this is for you. Come take it. What is it? Piece of candy? A weapon. Thanks, Varl. What weapon? We should keep moving. After you. What weapon is it? A frost blast sling, which has no ammunition. Uh, that will actually be useful. Okay, nothing over here. I just want to make sure we don't miss a lore point. Down here. As we continue to move forward. Ooh. 
Anything else back here hiding? No. I think we're almost back outside. Good. But then it becomes very interesting. So the, this is a very well crafted tutorial. It lays the groundwork of basic concepts for you. Look, that must be the machine. It's the nope rope. It's heading in the same direction we're going. Great. And now you can kind of begin to make out what it is anthropomorphically. But the tutorial does a very good job of laying the fundamental, here's the stuff that you forgot. Or here's the stuff that you did not experience if you didn't play Zero Dawn that are important. If you're just looking to play a game. I'm pretty sure we don't need to drop to ledge. We're, we're good. Let me just fall off that one. One of the things that takes me aback about Horizon, both games, is the beauty of the environment. Those machines. I don't want to try out the new weapon on it. We're going to sit up here and pick it off from a high ground because that's the smart thing to do. But look at the environment. I mean, it's just... That storm exists in the game. Yeah, me too, Rocket. I wish the DLC was already out. We're going to hit this first because it's going to turn around. What's the matter, fella? Can't get up here? That's okay. That big machine must have attacked as they tried to escape. They didn't stand a chance. Hey, we walked in the acid like a genius. So the way elemental buildups work is you'll notice that in the upper corner, kind of underneath the timeline, there's a green marker. You said this backup is the last home. When the... Yeah. All those places I've been these last few months, there were supposed to be more backups. When the acid would fill up, then I would hit what's called the elemental limit and become covered in acid, and then start to take damage. Was he part of Far Zenith too? No. He was worse. That's the truth. Looks like we can cross over here. That is the interesting question. Ted Farrow was not a part of Far Zenith, but... It was the 77 you know, most influential and well influential and wealthy individuals. There's no doubt he could have been, or at least had some awareness of their inner dealings. Ted Farrow was a monster, but he wasn't stupid. Well, they nerf Aloy because they can't have you go through the tutorial OP. Which is why any successive playthrough of this game for me will be done as NG+, because I have my abilities at this point. So, let's see. Can we do a eject jump? Yes. Like I said, he's not stupid. He made, he made a series of poor judgment calls, but his intellect is not lacking rocket you can't judge a person's intellect based on a, a series of successive narcissistic errors made at one point in his life at one point in his life he was the man who saved the world don't forget like again i'm not saying that he is not a monster but it's too simplistic to say he's dumb he's not that All right, we have to figure out where we're going here. Okay, that's where the the system can be a little frustrating. It's like, why don't you just climb up to that next little piece? And again, be pa being patient with it is the important part. 202 Ridgewood, not bad. I don't think you can go in this cave. There's a grapple point here though, save us some time. Our place to go is over there, so we might as well follow the quest marker instead of being Joe, the guy who ignores the thing on the screen. So let's go this way and see what it wants us to do. It wants us to go up, up that way. Okay, so I see where they want us to go now.
Like I said, it's Ted Farah's hubris that destroyed the world. All right, we have another data point here. So this is a journal from the Osirum who are here. Book. A journal filled with hastily scrawled glyphs, which is what in the post in the horizon world, post zero dawn, is basically what's called writing. Day one. We descended into the valley and breached the ruins. Boss always had a good sense for delve sites, and by the forge he was right. This place is untouched. He had to knock down a few machines while we were moving our gear. Pesky things keep popping out of the ground, but otherwise, we've got the whole place to ourselves. Set up camp near the main entrance. Farouf nearly jumped out of his skin when he dropped his hammer and it went a clanging down the stairs. Kid's first delve, I reckon, even if he swears otherwise. He's lucky this one's above ground at least. Day 2. Pushed further into the ruins. Boss tested out his latest prototype, what he's calling a hook and pull. Name needs work if you ask me. I showed Farouf a simple trick to evaluate salvage. The less it's rusted, the higher price it'll fetch in, it'll fetch in Meridian which is the Karja tribe capital. All in all, a good day. Until he insisted he saw the trees shaking across the river. Kids jump rather than a frog on hot coals. Day four. Felt a deep rumble in the dead of night. Land shake, maybe. But it's got the whole crew on edge. Boss ordered half of us up, half of us to set up a second camp further in. Figures, we'll pick this place clean faster if we split up. No arguments there. I think I'll set up a training dummy for Farouf. Kid can barely hold his own against a burrower. Day 6. Only a few of us left. Kid didn't make it. Machine blasted him with acid at the river crossing. Can hear it slithering outside. A few more minutes rest, then we're going to make a run for it. It gives you the idea of what happened to the Osram who were here. That we've been kind of stepping through their corpses as we traverse the environment. These guys couldn't catch a break. That's a burrower, and there's not a lot of cover between here and there. But it did just turn. Machines patrolling ahead. Thanks for all we see them. We can tag them in the focus to keep track of them. Yes, we can. Oh, great, you're both walking together. One of you turn around. Crap. One down. We're all just out there hanging out. The one thing games fail to get right is stealthing your companion. I think we just take him out. I don't think there's anybody else here. Stand up, look around. Or we'll just shoot you in the eye. That'll work. Yeah, but I mean, immersion-wise, he's just like, Hey, what's this guy over here doing? Was another one here? Crap! <laughs> Didn't see it. How that hit me? Okay. Know how to get out of here? That's been a year. No wonder I didn't remember that was here. I don't need to craft any arrows yet. Anything here we're missing? There is a was it a stalker? No, it's a, there's another burrower down there though. But we're not gonna be able to tag that because of the chest next to it. Okay. 
machine ripped right through the wall. There's a ladder in the back. Anything we missed while we're here? What is that? Uh, I'm not really that concerned with the valuables box. What it is here is so might as well get it. What's in here? Hook up, oh, thank you. Ancient chimes, which are keys. And we might as well get that, which puts us at 53. Okay, we cannot fill our pouch past 10, which is interesting because it's 28 in the game proper. So they don't want you to be able to be too OP healing-wise either. All right, up we go. So tell me something. Sona was really okay with you not going back to the Sacred Lands? As the Nora War Chief, she understood why I was obligated to follow you. But as my mother, she wasn't pleased. Is she ever pleased? I don't think I've seen her smile. Me neither. <laughs> She's a very stern woman. So do, now do you think that the people use the, quote, ancient chimes as actual wind chimes? Well, I, yes, I think they do. Otherwise, why would the focus be classifying them as such? It's it's obviously inferring some colloquial definition in what the, in the data it presents to Aloy. So... I do think that is, at least at times, what they are used for. I mean, otherwise, I think people will look at these items, these keys, and go, I don't understand, especially the Nora, uh, will look at them and go, I don't understand what these do, because they don't have any knowledge of the, the ancient world. Now, the, the Osram probably are like, well, this is a cool idea. I bet we could reverse engineer this. I think it depends on the tribe, to be very sure. And I'm only going to continue to reference the Zero Dawn tribes until we are introduced to the Forbidden West tribes. Even though two of the three major tribes that you run into in in uh, Forbidden West were mentioned in Zero Dawn, if you really dove into the lore. Alright, so that's our way up. There's the nope rope. Oh, look, there's more than one nope rope. Three of those things. And if they slaughtered all those Osram, we'll never get through to the data center. There's no way to slip past them. They're too tough to fight head on. We could find a settlement, convince some hunters to help us. That would take weeks, and we don't have that kind of time. Maybe all we need is that shuttle to fall. That thing? How? We'll figure it out. Just wait here. Aloy! Trust me. And there she goes. Alright, so this is a very good... the shuttle to figure out how to make it fall into the basin. This is a very good spot to take a break. And what I'm going to do is pause the recording because I intend for the recording to be a, a single episode, which is the the tutorial introduction so for those of you hanging out live thanks for being here um for those of you that picked it or watching this on a replay on youtube you're gonna see a blip here as we pause the recording and then come back to finish the tutorial so i'll be right back you guys make sure you stretch your legs and uh, thanks for hanging out with me this morning all right we are back and the recording is going again so we will pick up this story here Thanks for your patience. Stretch my legs, got to refill my drink. Hopefully you did some of the same. But we have to get across to that facility across the way, and that shuttle, which is leaning, we need to drop on those nope ropes, which we still don't have a name for in terms of this playthrough. So Varl just said, how are you going to do that? And Aloy said, watch me, and here we go. This will introduce the rappel mechanic, and then there's some machines down there. I believe those are two burrowers. Another one over there that we cannot scan. That, no, there it is. 
the range of the focus in Forbidden West is much shorter than it was in Zero Dawn, and I don't like it. So where's our first guy at here? There's a couple of them. Let's tag you. That's our guy. Maybe a third, I'm not sure. Be able to find a way across to yeah, turn around here, yep. As for their territorial too, in chat from Rocket, um, a lot of the the machines in Zero Dawn are territorial. Or in Horizon, I guess, is to say they're territorial. I'm gonna sneak up here and get him when he walks past one more time. The problem with burrowers and uh, watchers is they are effectively sentries. If you get them and don't get them in stealth, well, why are you now walking that way, pal? Um, it will call in buddies. And that makes the fight much more difficult. Just get you here. This is where my impatience is showing. Yeah, we got him. His pal is up there. Just turned away from us, fortunately. Now a couple of the other ones are wondering what's going on, which I didn't see. Come on, have a look. You know, you're curious. And he's scanning for us. And he's no longer interested. Is there another one floating around somewhere? Not that concerned about that. All right, anything else in front of us here as we kind of turn the circle into this? I did this much better this time than I did the first time I played it, that's for sure. I think we're good. Watch it be like a stalker hiding down here or something. I'm just not looking. I don't think there is, though. Alright, there's a ladder there with a lock and a drop. We just have to get inside. There. That ladder can get me up to the tower. Thank you. Why well, did concentration on that? wasn't moving. Instinct. You got your bow out. Use concentration. It'll make your shot easier. If the target's moving. Alright, this is the part that confounds a lot of people. And it gave me fits. But if you look above me, there's a grapple point. And then the grapple point is a launch back, I believe, to a grab. Is what she just said, even though I don't see yellow point, so... We're going to try it and see what happens. Yeah, the game lied. At least we didn't take any fall damage there. So, that again. I didn't get up high enough. I better try oh, this is like the one time that this, this exists as a... Yeah. The tutorial message didn't play, and I forget how to do this. Let's not fall. Oh, we fell. Oh, this is going to be a pain. This is like the one time in the game that it requires you to make this sort of jump as a non-optional part of climbing, and it's annoying. I 
can reach the rail up there if I launch myself off the grapple point. Yep, so it comes down to what button do I need to press to launch myself? There it was. It. Circle. I knew it was XX something. The only time in the game you must do it that way. There are always other paths if you don't want to do that. Which is why I didn't remember how to. Alright. So our only path up, and you'll see here, these will be highlighted yellow, yes. So along there were three giant machines killing us or leaving us. That is everywhere. correct, Aloy. Great. Well, that sounds good. That's a hell of a way to jump. So that is a grapple point. Sheer courage it would take to make a jump like that. Tower down. On to the next. I, I guess that highlights one of her other core traits is her determination. Remember to clonk that follow button. I do love how the environment deteriorates. Okay, um, there we go. How it kind of reflects the notion that the world that was is rampantly decayed. There is a scrounger there. There's another creature moving there. It's another scrounger. Let's get to cover here. Looks like there are massive clamps holding the shuttle in place. I bet there's a control console nearby. If and there's a the clamps, borrower here the too. Should fall right into the basement. The borrower should be our first concern. Oh, great. More machines in my way. So that he doesn't alert everybody to collapse on us. So let's walk over here. What's his path? gonna walk right past this bush here. We just gotta be patient. And of course that scrounger needs to not pop out and see us when we do it. And here comes our burrower. As he stands up. Turn, buddy. Crap, he saw us. That's what we didn't want to have happen. Get up, get up. So he shock limited me, and that's why I fell. Okay, well that's not how we wanted to do it, but it's how it went down. The burrower turned as I snuck up on him, and that happens. I got a little impatient there instead of letting him continue on his path.
Is there anything in that tower? That's like the tower we just came out of, right? That's the way back up into it, I think. No, I don't think there is a way back up into it. Just busted metal. Let's have a look around real quick. I don't think there's anything else here except plants and ridge wood. Oh, there's a box over there. It'll just be like three metal bits. Yeah. Seven shards and two machine muscle. Machine muscle, I ended up having at the end of my base run somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,000 machine muscle. And I sold myself down to 1,000 before I started this run might be in there. to have some money. Because it's going to cost 10,000 shards to upgrade okay. the two new um, the two new weapons. Down below. Those are some pretty strong cables after a thousand years. Oh, one thing that's irritating me right now. The shuttle's caught up in those cables. I'm gonna have to climb the tower to find a way to disconnect them. Oh, what a conveniently dropped elevator. Now, how to get up the tower? So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Um, feedback is always appreciated if you like the way we're approaching this. So that guy right there is Polecaster. Like the the approach to what we're what I'm trying to do here. Let me know. You think it stinks? Let me know. All right. So can we climb up here? Yes. trying to do this jump was a pain yep that's why because you could fall off of there that jump was a pain in the base game <clears throat> well <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to, to do oh, cool fish <clears throat> I'm trying to do it in a way that is <coughs> engaging enough that a an individual may wish to pay attention but also provide the replays so that people don't feel like they don't have FOMO if they miss a stream. Um, if you know, you can always go back and find the thing in the course of the story you're looking for. Um, but the Horizon games are fantastic. I, I get, and I know that you in particular uh, are not a fan of 3D and motion kind of a thing, and it is a thing for a lot of people. Uh, the third-person perspective helps out a lot with that with me. But I'm very happy to to dig into a game I love. And in a, a world I really, really, really think is one of the best thought out game settings in a long time. I know it's not my traditional yelling at everybody in darkest dungeon type of a stream, but I am trying to take a different approach to this narratively and presentation wise. So cool. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. That seems like the same way we just went. Yes. We gotta get over here. Can we make that jump? Oh, somehow we did. I don't believe that, that we should have, but... Alright, so there's a cable here we've gotta shoot. You gotta love how it glows for the protagonist. Seems like we put us right back where we were, yes? And we need to get to almost the same place we were. Do we have to climb up a different way here? I don't think it's that. Nope. Alright, maybe we have to go back across here. Same jump that we felt like we should have missed the first time. Yeah, that way it looked better graphically that time. 
Oh, there's another cable that we missed? Okay. There's the other connector. It's the same connector. Totally the same connector. Maybe we climbed up one level and it looked very similar. SRB. No ropes. Um. Yeah, this is Aloy. She didn't think the whole. No. Okay, we can't limit break it with that, so we're just gonna start taking out its parts. That is the charge sound. Yep. Hey, let's make some more bullets, huh? There it is. That's knocked down, and don't I wish I had freaking rope casters. Get ripped apart. Already stripped one of his. Oh, that's bad news, bears. Don't put me back on. Free. Yeah, it broke free it's from. It's sparkers are exposed, though. That was really, really bad. Where my focus might find something I can use around here. That's a charge. In your grinder. There it is. She's just she's so tough to fight because of how much she moves around, as Perm was saying earlier. There it is. I am a tear damage hunter, and you can tell. Finally. Because of how much I rely on ripping parts for damage, even though this bow is not really set up for it. The data center should be straight ahead. I guess we're all gonna have to find another way there. So this is called a slither fang. If you want to have a look at how it's built. And the detail in which the des the developers put into this thing. This is an explodable piece, a subcomponent. These are metal bite lines that run through its tail. This right here is an electric spike that runs off a sparker. You can see the detail in all of the grinders that make up underneath it. Actually, this is its fangs. Um, in this component here, I ripped the parts out because I'm very used to farming for them, but these are the earth grinders. This machine is designed to, to grind up material. It's also an apex machine from Hephaestus, but you can see the sheer level of detail that went in, the thought that went into making this thing and 
Like these, these are actually drill bits that are sitting on this as it turns, and these, the the ax, axial motion as it rotates, and then the turning of the bits. It's all very extremely well thought out. There's its tail, which I ripped off part of. Yeah, it's a dangerous, but it's very very well said perm. It's a dangerous but pretty thing. The way it's layered, the way that you can see the machine muscle underneath it, it's just extremely well built as a game asset, but it, it the level of attention that they put into this is one of the new creatures. The, 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 nev the level of attention they put into developing these anthropomorphic machines that Gaia put forth is really astounding. And it, it lends very much to my, my love and immersion in this game. Hey, we have 530 metal shards. It's not a bad start. We're going to have a lot more here in a couple minutes, but we're very near the end of the tutorial. And what we'll do here in terms of recording is I do want to be a little bit more episodic in approach. So as we finish the tutorial, we will close out and then start a new recording. Hair is always the Achilles heel. Yeah, and hers looks like she's kind of underwater because it's, it's very hard for in a long hair build to present weight. To it, like any motion they have, there's they cannot. Well, it's about tree physics. Hair physics has never been able to incorporate changes in things like humidity and the length and the weight. It's all just one physics object, no matter how long it sits. I agree. Yeah, Rex. Um, I actually remember uh, it was my ex-girlfriend who introduced me to the Horizon trailer when it first came out, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I don't want to hunt dinosaur machines." And then I Once played it up, when I finally got a PlayStation Gaia. Four. I was like, "Wow!" Fix the system, heal the blight, restore Elizabeth's dream. But is it still there? So this is a very important plot point coming up. Yeah, you would think that the lack of ability to get boob physics correct in uh, WWE would be a good reason for the developers to watch a lot of video on how that works. Okay, I should find the server room. So we are about to obtain what Aloy believes to be the copy of Gaia that Farzina still has on premises. <laughs> yeah, indeed. There's no drop down here. Interesting. Is it that not that far of a drop? Or no, are you just going to kind of auto do it? No, auto. Hey, eh, that one. I have to be. So you can hear in Aloy's voice now, like the desperation. You have to understand. It's been six months since Horizon Zero Dawn, and she is well aware that the biosphere is collapsing. She's desperate to find a copy of Gaia because Gaia's last message to Elizabeth, the clone, who's now named Aloy, was, even though I believe I failed, I know you will find a way. It's placed a purpose onto her. All right, so there's another log coming up here. And then we'll go into that room. What to do about Dalgard? That's Oswald Dalgard, the guy who's been the front PR face of Farzenith. Text log. Data corruption partial. Data corrupted on to the matter of Mr. Dalgard. He's been a valuable member of Farzenith for years. Even Peter saw the need for a polished spokesman to preserve anonymity for the rest of us. But with all the new members we've recruited to increase funds for the Odyssey's exped expedited timeline, there are simply not enough berths on the ship to accommodate. Cuts have to be made. And let's face it, Oswald lacks the skill set for our future aims. He'll retaliate if we exclude him, of course, so we'll have to give him a proper send-off. But that doesn't mean that his usefulness must end. We have plenty of source material to generate a digital puppet, giving us the means to data corrupt it. So... Mr. Dalgard, as the spokesperson, does not have use to Farzenith once they launch, and they have limited space, so they're going to cut him out. And they're going to cut him out by eliminating him. That's how ruthless, and that's the, they're foreshadowing this a little bit, that's how ruthless Farzenith is. 
and they're going to continue to use his likeness because they can simply deep fake him. And that's what they're talking about doing. We can get rid of him now and deep fake everything else we need from all the archival footage we have of him. I don't think there's anything else down there. All right. So into the chamber we go. This is the big deal. Please be here. Again, Aloy's desperation. It's here. Gaia version 6.9. Initializing. Hello. Hi. Was it? Travis Tate. Now, what's this we got here? A far as in conspiracy to steal a copy of Gaia? And her subordinate functions? Naughty, naughty. You want me to handle this, Liz? Blasphemers! Brood of vipers! With a mighty hand, I smite and pour troubles upon you! Aloy? The goddess. There is no goddess. I told you that already. That's not Gaia. That's not what I'm looking for. It's nothing but a fake. sometimes you know but it was pretty amazing to see you fly off that tower and blow up the entire basin the thing is um there's going to be more of that i'm out of leads Floral. but i i have to keep searching and fast and whatever risks i have to take i will and it doesn't make sense to have someone with me someone who might get hurt this is on me, Farrell. Nobody else. Hold on. Before, in Meridian, you said there was a man who helped you. Silence. You said you used to talk to him a lot about things you discovered from the old world, things no one else understands. And he gave you the lance you used to defeat Hades. He's gone, Farrell. I haven't heard from him since the battle against Hades. Sure. But Spymaster Murad, back in Meridian, he's good at finding people, isn't he? Varl, I... <sighs> Come on, it might work. Plus, you'll get to see some friendly faces again. <laughs> okay. I... I guess it's worth a shot. We've got a long walk ahead. Actually... I've got a better idea.
son, it's true. She's come back. Bless us. The savior of Meridian has returned. You earned this welcome. You saved them. Not yet. In the name of the Sun King of Vard, a royal welcome for the champion. Make way. Marat, Aloy has an urgent matter to discuss. Dashane, that makes two of us. I've sent forth hunters for weeks. The sun fall all the way to the sacred land, searching for you. Something happened at the spire. Come. I'll show you. Watch your step. You saved us all, to be sure, but uh, we're still cleaning up the mess. It happened right after the solstice. We were able to explain it away, thank the sun. Otherwise, it might have caused a panic. <laughs> One night, for less than half a minute, it glowed an angry red. From Meridian, it looked like a trick of the light. But those who were closer, atop the alight, said it could not have been a reflection. Much to my dismay, they said the light rose up from the tower's base. From that. We left everything just as it was. What do you think happened? I don't know. The Spire's supposed to send out signals, messages, for the terraforming system. But Hades tried to use it to wake up ancient war machines. I was sure I got the connection to that thing. Wait here while I check it out. Let us know what you find. 